Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blog around the OAA, the host of Last Week Brain Cells and host of Tweet Taramina's on Ordinary Toad. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on Ordinary Toad. I want to talk about this week here. Um, basketball recap. Um, obviously, the um, Division One State Finals just concurred and ended. Um, we're going to recap North Farmington's run. Um, also, we're going to look at, um, you know, the girls' basketball quarterfinals. Um, what are the chances for West Bloomfield and Stony Creek to make some noise in the postseason tournament? Um, heading in the final weeks of basketball season, we're in the heart of March Madness, obviously. So we're going to look at all those so let's look at our main story here obviously it's the boys basketball quarterfinals um the boys basketball division one state finals um north farmington um went to the breslin center for the first time since 2016 um had a rematch with zealand west um had no issue with them um north ended up winning that game um you know at 58 39 um obviously the play of tyler spratt was the difference in that game and then it set up an interesting rematch with Orchard Lake St. Mary's, of course, um, in the state final. Of course, Orchard Lake St. Mary's um, has beaten North Farmington twice, um, including last year's very controversial finish, um, where um, that was 56-44, where I thought a fishing was god-awful in that game. Um, now, when I look at watching the state finals on Saturday, and I watched that game, and I really watched it really carefully, um, I, I'll be honest with you, I didn't like the fishing in that game because I thought they weren't, you know, I honestly, I, I just thought that the fishing was just absolutely, you know, it was a physical game, and I get officials have to call it, you know what I mean, like what they see it, but this is where I'm going to blast the officials is, you know, they teed both coaches up. I know Todd Negotian got teed up. I uh, don't know why he did. Um, Todd Colbert's technical, I thought was deserving. Um, but when I look at the score of that one, it was, um, 63 52 was the final score in that game. Um, Trey McKinney had 32 points for, um, Orchard Lake St. Mary's, um, perf from the line, but you know, and then North Farm Tops had a spread at 17 points and, um, fouling out in the middle of the fourth quarter, um, Landon Williams at 16 for the Raiders. Um, you know, when I look at Orchard Lake St. Mary's, um, I don't want to talk much about them, but I know we got to bring them up, obviously. Um, when I look at Orchard Lake St. Mary's and I kind of look at Trey McKinney as, you know, what he did his eighth grade year, um, announcing that he was going to go to St. Mary's to me, I thought that was a very selfish decision, um, because, Honestly, you know, you don't have to use social media to announce your intentions of going to, to a high school. I know a lot of people use use it for colleges, but not for high school. Um, and then obviously seeing him, um, you know, obviously, um, you know, and then seeing what he did, 32 points, um, just different ways, you know, what he did. Am I impressed with this game? No. I mean, I've seen players have had monster games, um, you know, that can be in so many different ways. Um, do I, I think there's a lot of other players that are better than McKinney that I've seen in my history. Um, obviously, I know a lot of people are going to say, well, you know, Trey McKinney's one of the best players in the state of Michigan. It's true, but, but if it was my opinion, if I had to rank McKinney, I wouldn't even rank him in the top 15. And that's, and that's honesty. Um, but when I look at that game, and obviously, you know, officials, they get starstruck, and obviously they look at McKinney as, a, as you know, the star player, obviously. You know they're going to want to give, give him the benefit of the doubt. And I really think that's what happened here to North Farmington, was they didn't give, you know, that they, they gave him the benefit of the doubt. So... You know, obviously, you look at the free throw line, you know, the free throws. He was 14 of 14, I think, from the line. Um, you know, most of his points from the line, obviously. 
You know what he can give? He can shoot threes, obviously. I mean, like, but, you know, and obviously in a North defense, you know, North had to try to contain him. He's got an NBA-like body. I mean, that's what Coach Todd Negotian said on his, um, in his presser. Um, you know, and, you know, and I'm not going to be mean here. You know, obviously, you know, you look at Orchard Lake St. Mary's' road, obviously. Um, you know, people are going to always question the public-private school debate. And, you know, and, and always it's going to be it. I mean, obviously, you know, you look at the players like, um, you know, I know Hines and Salvary, of course, wanted to play with McKinney, had to sit out a year because of the transfer rules. Um, and, you know, Will Smite, I mean, like Daniel Smite had a, um, you know, had a big, had a great career for Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Um, but I'm just not a fan of, the way they recruit kids. I just don't like how they recruit kids. I mean, you know, obviously you look at a team like North Farmington. Now, yes, North Farmington, they do they do go get some kids that want to come in and play. I mean, obviously, um, you know, you look at um Dylan Smith to transfer in from Wall Lake Western. Um, you know, but you know, Tyler Spratt and Landon Williams were four year players for um Coach Todd Negotiation. They were four year players. Um, had to go through a lot of pain. I mean, they had to go through, obviously, the, um, you know, the two losses to Orchard Lake St. The three losses to Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Um, but they went through, I mean, they had the COVID year where they couldn't play, um, you know, due to COVID in their freshman year. Um, and then, you know, everything going back in the thick of it. Um, you know, falling to Orchard Lake St. Mary's in the regional semis, then falling to them in the regional final, and now you followed them in the state final. Um, you know, they had a great career. I mean, especially Spratt and Williams. I mean, the both of them are going to D1 schools. Of course, Williams going to Niagara. Um, Tyler Spratt going to Cleveland State. Um, I look at North Farmington and, you know, they had a great year. I mean, they had a really, had a really great year to where they, um, I thought, you know, the district was kind of like, you know, also like, okay, you know what I mean? They, they should get there. And then the regional... It was going to be tough for them against Groves. I mean, like, they earned that one, and that was a good win for them at the time. And then they had a knockoff Warren D. Sal, um, behind two free throws from Aria Melzer, um, which was just really insane. And then, you know, the state quarterfinal match against River Rouge, where, um, you know, obviously Tyler Spratt took over that game, and he played like a man in that one. He was a man in that one. He basically just took over that game. And, you know, you look at, that's what great players do. I mean, that's why, you know, you look at a guy like Tyler Spratt who's going to Cleveland State next year, playing in the Horizon League. Um, you know, he can, he's more than capable of taking over a game by himself. And, you know, and I think he, um, you know, and he and Landon Williams, I thought was a great one-two, one-two duel this year over there at North. I mean, you know, Rob Smith really um, emerges a point as a starting point guard. Um, you can move spread off ball. Landon Williams, very good at the three. Dylan Smith at the four. Um, Ari Messler, you can bring him off the bench. He can shoot threes for you. Um, they got others on that team I was really impressed with. Um, you know, so I really like what Coach Todd Negotian did this year. And it also was coaching staff. I mean, his dad, Tom Negotian. Um, you look at Pete Mantella, who's the JV coach. Um, a lot of great men on that. A lot of great people on that staff over there at North. A lot of great people. Um, I just feel bad that they weren't able to get the um, Division One state championship. Um, just felt really bad for them. Um, just watching the game, I really felt like a fishing was absolutely atrocious again. Um, you know, and I really thought they were starstruck when they gave Trey McKinney, you know what I mean, the benefit of the doubt. Now, does he have an NBA body? Yeah, um, you know, but it just proves to me, you know, with him, and I know people are going to criticize me over this, which is fine, but, but I mean, obviously calling him the best player in the state, I don't think he is, and there's a lot of reasons why I don't think he is. Um, I think there's about, he's not even in my top 15 when it comes to top players in the state of Michigan. I mean, I've seen incredible performances that I could be so proud of, you know what I mean, compared to McKinney's game. 
I mean, I am not a fan of McKinney's game at all. I'm really not. Um, but, you know, and I think, you know, people are subject to their own opinions. And I'm one of them. But, honestly, when you look at his game, and then you got to ask yourself with him, can he do it on his own? Can he take over a game? Can he do it on his own? Can he win a game without help? And the fact of the matter is, he chose to go to Orchard Lake St. Mary's. He chose to, you know, he chose this path. And, you know, obviously, and then he has players coming coming to Orchard Lake St. Mary's to, um, you know what I mean, to be on his side. You know what I mean? And, honest, and honestly, um, you know, and, you know, I'm just saying is if you're a star player and you prefer to be on your own team, you know what I mean? You prefer to be, um, to have your, um, you know, it'd be like a one man show. If you're like a one man show, look at the, what's happening over at mile. I mean, you know, you look at miles girls basketball team, you know, star players averaging 47 points a game. And, and she's basically taken over. She's basically, she did very well this year for Mile, and she's only a freshman. I'm really impressed with her. I'll tell you what. I mean, I mean, like, and then you look at, you know, <sighs> I mean, like, I mean, I'm, I mean, like, you look at what she's been doing at Mile. Um, I got to figure the name though. Um, I don't know the name on hand, but I know what she's been doing over there, and what she's been doing is just off the charts. You know, when you look at a guy like McKinney, who, you know, you got to look at, obviously, he's got a supporting cast. Um, you know, you look at players like James Savory, you look at Isaiah Hines, you look at Daniel Smythe. Um, you know, you just got to wonder yourself, how would he be like if he was in the same situation as a young lady from Mile? I mean, that's the question I would ask. And... I don't know how he would do. I really don't. But that's really where I look at with Trey McKinney is how do, how would I compare him to the situation he's in? And then you put the young lady from Mayo, um, and, you know, she's averaging, you know, 47 a game, basically carrying the team on her back. And, you know, that's how I'm looking at it. That's how I'm looking at it. And obviously against North Farmington, you know, North Farmington is a very good defense. Very good defense. They run that 2-2-1, full court trap. Um, I'm just going to be honest with you. Um, you know, obviously you look at this state championship for Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Um, you know, obviously they're the first team to win a state championship in, um, in um, I think, all four classes, um, Class D, Class C. Class B, Class A. It's their first since 2000. Um, but, you know, I'm not a fan of how they done it, how they got it, how they did it. But at the end of the day, you know what I mean? They're, they're the state's best team. They have the state's best player. And you look at next year for them, they're going to be loaded again. I mean, McKinney's back. He's going to be a senior next year. You have Hines. You have Savory. Um, you do lose Smite, that's a big loss. Um, but you know, but you know, you look at that team, they could be loaded for a repeat run. So that's my take on St. Mary's is I asked that question about McKinney is how would he be in the, in the, in the same situation as the young lady from mile? I mean, like, you know, I mean, like, that's the situation that I would look at is, you know, you got to basically look at that situation is, you know, can, is McKinney more than capable of carrying a team by himself? That's the question. That's the question I ask. And I know he'll probably say like, I'm more than capable. Here's the thing. Prove it. Prove it. The girl from mile, she's already proven it. What about you? That's the question. Um, so when I look at the um, boys' basketball season this year um, around the league, um, North Farmington, obviously, 
has a lot. I mean, they, they lose a lot of talent. Um, they do got Army Metzler coming back. I mean, they're going to be competitive. Um, I think they're going to be very competitive next year. Um, and I think they're going to be back. I really do. West Bluefield is going to be very scary next year. I mean, they're going to be scary. I mean, look at who they got coming back. I mean, Drew Wilson, Chris Britton. Um, they got some size. I mean, I look at West Bloomfield, and they could be a serious player. They could really be a serious, serious player. And, you know, and I'm not going to, I mean, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I think West Bloomfield next year could be, they could be a team that could be seriously thinking Breslin. I mean, that's how much confidence I have in Coach Ronette Jordan's team. Really do. Um, and then there is, um, and then there is, um, Adams, Adams loses Kardashian and G. Um, those are going to be two big losses. Um, they had great careers. Peter Kardashian, William G. Really impressed with both their games. Um, I was just really impressed with how they played, um, in all four years when they were at Adams. Just really impressed. Um, very good men. Very good. Very good players. Um, for both Jared Thomas and Isaiah Novak. Um, I mean, they 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 were very, very good players. Um, the future's bright with that program. I mean, at, you look at Trenton Lagarde, you look at, um, you know, who a player I'm really high on. Um, I think Adams could be a team that they're going to be scary. Um, they're going to be really, really scary. And, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Um, Clarkston... You lose Peyton Fitzsimmons. You lose, um, you know, you. I mean, like, they got the majority of the team coming back. You have Hayden Flam really emerged. Um, basically took over John Call's spot, which was very interesting. I expect Call to have a bounce back year or senior year. Um, I do expect Adam, I do expect Clarkson to be in that conversation again next year. Um, their program strength is always solid. Their freshman went undefeated this year. Um, there's a lot to like with Clarkson. I mean, a lot to like with them. Um, very curious to see how they do. I mean, really curious to see how things go for them next year. Groves, I'm really excited to see how this team does. John Simpson, Josh Gibson. Um, Paul Hubbard really emerged this year for Coach Mark West. Terrier's still a question mark for me, um, when I look at Groves. Um, so when I look at the Falcons, um, it's a team that I really think could be um, they could be dangerous. I mean, they could be really, really dangerous next year. I mean, they're going to be scary. Um, we'll see. We'll see. Um, Oak Park, they injury riddled season for them. Um, they do have their two top scores coming back. Um, Geo Hutchins is one of them. I'm curious to see what he does. Um, don't know what division Oak Park's going to be in yet to be at, but... You know, I expect Oak Park to have a bounce back year for Coach um, Durant Shepard. Um, and I think they're going to be just fine. I really think they're going to be just fine. We'll see what happens. Um, Troy. Um, Troy loses a lot of talent. I mean, they do lose. I mean, anytime you lose um, John Whiteside, you lose um, you lose a um, Chase Kuyper. It's going to be tough to replace. We do have Andrew Lake. You have um, Mason. You have um, yeah, bro. Yeah, Mason Parker coming back. Um, really excited to see how Jack Sabaka does. I mean, I think he's going to be a key player for them next year. Leo Panos is another one I'm high on uh, for Coach Gary Fralick. I mean, there's depth on that team over there, Troy. There's depth. Um, but losing those two guys like um, Kuiper and um, Whiteside are going to be really tough to replace. So when I look at Troy, um, program strength, not the not the greatest over there. I mean, it's a big concern over there going forward. Um, but I think the Colts can be a team that really, you know, I think the Colts can be a team that, you know, they're going to be solid next year. They'll be solid. I don't think they're going to be as good as they were this year. Um, they start, remember, this team started off losing a double overtime game to Berkeley. And then they bounced back and knocked off. Um, and they bounced back and won 22 straight games before losing to Birmingham Brother Rice in the district final. Um, so that's my take on it, um, with Troy. And I really think with the Colts, um, 
I think Troy could really, you know, they're going to do some damage. I think Troy could be a team that they can make some noise next year. I mean, obviously Mason Parker's getting a lot more attention now, but Andrew Lake's really emerged. Curious to see if um, Leo Pinoza and um, and um, Jack Sabaka, how they merge this year for um, Troy heading into next year. Troy Athens, um, they lost a lot. Curious to see how Nathan Pickett does next year. Really curious to see, because he's going to be one of the big players for the Red Ox. And I think Troy Athens is a team that could be, they could be all right. I mean, program strength, eh, they're okay. But, you know, but I think, knowing Coach Dave Scott, I think he's going to get that thing figured out over there real quick over there at Athens. Um, but I think Athens will be a team to really watch for heading into next year. And we'll see what happens. And we'll see what happens. Um, Harper Woods. Oh boy, there's some concerns here. Um, they didn't. They lost to East Point. Was really shocked how they lost that one the first round. Um, they do have a promising sophomore going to be a junior next year. Uh, I don't have the name on me right now, but I think Harper Woods. You know, this could be a team that you know they do lose Julian Young and Isaiah Lewis. That's going to be big losses for Coach Tuan Porter. Um. But program strength is a big concern, especially what happened in wake of what happened during the JV con JV season for them, where they had to suspend their, their program because of what happened at Farmington. Um, and then in the and then their freshman program, you know what I mean? So program strength for Harper Woods is a big concern going forward. And really that's the one that I think you gotta keep an eye on is the concern over there at Harper Woods is with their program strengths. Um Bloomfield Hills, the future's bright for them. Um, really like um, Philip Muhammad, um, Deron Mason. Um, they got Carter Canfield. Um, I think that's a three-headed monster. I think Bloomfield Hills will be a scary team next year. Only question I have for Coach and Brian Canfield's team is the interior. Um, if they can figure that out in the interior, I think they're going to be very good. I think they're going to be solid. So we'll see. I mean, we'll see. I mean, Bloopy Hills program strength is a little concerning, um, but I know Coach Brian Canfield he'll have that program ready to go, especially hanging the next year. So we'll see what happens with them. Southfield Arts and Tech. When I look at the Warriors, A um, and T um, had a rough year. It was a very rough year. Young team, not a lot of experience. Um, they struggled during the year. Um, but a lot of questions coming up, a lot of questions. Um, when I look at Orchard Lake, I'm sorry, when I look at, um, A&T, um, I think A&T, you know, most likely I see them going down to the blue, um, uh, program strength is concern, but their JV team brought some hope. And I think that's going to be interesting to see, um, uh, with what A&T has going forward. So A&T. You know, I think be patient with them. And I know it's going to be a challenge because Terrence Porter. Um, so we'll see what happens with them. Um, I think A&T, you know, may be primed for a bounce back year in the blue division next year. So we'll see. Um, and then you got Lake Orion. Um, when I look at the Dragons, um, anytime you return nine returning players, it's going to be huge. But they do lose Quay Fly. They do lose Ethan Sharkey. Lose Sam Blakely, you lose Hayden Armstrong. Those are four big losses right there for Coach Jose Andrades. Um, you do return your guards. You got Gabe Scott and um, Nick Galvin. Um, you do have Zach Parks coming back. You have um, Ryan Washington coming back. Um, I really think when I look at when I look at um, Lake Orion, and I think the Dragons can be very good next year. Is you look at, of course, they and then their JV program this year was very good. We won 19 games. You know what I mean? That says a lot. Um, actually, take that back. You went 20. Um, you went 21. You went um not 20 and two this year. I mean, that says a lot. Um, 19 and two this year. That says a lot. Um, so when I look at the Dragons, the future of the program is bright for Coach Jose Andrades. Um, and I'm very curious to see where. How they're gonna how they're gonna match up, especially next year when you look at most likely gonna probably have a tougher schedule. Um, so I think Lake Orion can be a very scary team to watch, especially in the next year. Farmington's another team that I'm really high on next year. 
they could be a scary team to watch. Now, what hurt Farmington was the injury to Greg Grace. I mean, the injury to Greg Grace really hurt them. But, you know, you look at that team this year. I mean, they struggled early on. I mean, they struggled early on. Um, and, and then once they started fitting in the Brian Johnson system, then that's when Greg Grace got going. I'm telling you what, Greg Grace is going to be a star. I mean, like, I'm really excited to see how Greg Grace plays. I like his mechanics. I like his game a lot. Um, you know, Greg Grace to me, you know what I mean, and I really enjoy watching this young man play is, you know, he is a talent. He is a proven talent that I think Division One colleges really need to start looking at this young man because I'm telling you, he can create his own offense. He can, he can, he's a team player. He can really, he does a lot of things well for Farmington. I mean, you know, they really missed him in that game, especially against Redford Thurston in the first round where um, he can give it a go because of his knee and because of his foot injury. Um, but it's a credit where credit's due. I mean, Greg Grace is going to, is a heck of a player, heck of a talent. You put him alongside Darrell Coltrane. I mean, like, and then you had that JV class, which was just very good this year. I mean, like, Farmington's JV program was very good this year. And the freshmen's getting there. But I'll tell you what, Farmington, next two years, you don't want to see this team. They are scary. They're going to be scary. <laughs> and then there's Seaholm. Seaholm is an interesting spot because they lose a lot of senior talent. Um... You don't know who the new coach is going to be after what happened to Coach and Mike DeGeter. Um, obviously, we don't know who the coach is going to be yet. We don't know what the system he's going to put in yet. <laughs> I mean, who knows? I mean, we'll see what happens. I mean, with Seaholm. I mean, their freshman team was solid. I mean, they won 17 games. JV wasn't bad. Um, I know there's a lot of, lot of names out there for Seaholm who could take over that program. Very curious to see who does over there. Really curious to see who takes over. Um, but it's going to come down to the coaching situation over there. So, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, with with um, Seahome. So Let's go now from the white to the blue. Um, obviously, when you look at this division, um, Avondale won the division this year. Um, they're likely moving up to the um, white. Or they could, I mean, like, or who knows where they're moving up to. Um, but I'll tell you what, they do return some key players. I mean, Jordan Bush, Michael Clayton, got Justin Greer Sykes coming back. Avondale's going to be a team that, they could be scary. I mean, and you have a coach in Jared Thomas who did a really good job with this team. He did a really nice job with them. And I think he's going to lead that team to better things when you look at it. Program strength is solid over there at Avondale. They got talent. They got coaching there. Um, adding Steve Laidlaw to the um, JV staff really helped. Um, you know, and I look at um, and I look at Avondale. This is a team that could be really scary heading into next year. And they're going to be a team that I don't think a lot of people want to see next year. Um, then we go to Oxford. Um, when I look at the Cats, um, they lose two seniors, um, including um, Jay Katie. Um, but when you look at coach Fed's team, um, they had a nice year. I mean, you know, they had it. I mean, they had a chance to win the blue. Um, but it looks to me like according to rumors, they could be in the white next year, which could help this program going forward. You do return to play like Jake Champagne. You have Luke Stolfin coming back. You have Drew Katie. You have, um, you have Nolan Mauser. You have, um, you know, and then of course you have, um, you have Brody, you have, you have Allen coming back as well. I mean, like, you know, this team, this this Oxford team could be scary next year. They could be really good next year. I mean, with the experience they got back. Program strength a little up and down, but when I look at Fed's team, they, I mean, it'll be interesting to see what happens with them in June when they, when the districts come. That's when the districts come out is, in June, and I think that's going to be curious to see how um how this happens, how this works. Um, when I look at um when I look at um Oxford, and I think it's going to be a team I think could really be interesting to watch. So 
we'll see what happens. I mean, we'll see. We'll see what happens. And, you know, I think Oxford could be a scary team next year. I really do. Um, then let's go to, um, to Berkeley. Berkeley had a nice year. I mean, got the district final. They lose a lot of senior experience. They lose a lot of talent. Um, so that's going to be an interesting, see what, how coach Joe Thermal does with this team. Um, curious to see how they're going to do this. And, you know, you look at what Berkeley is going to do. And I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens there with them. It'll be very interesting to see what happens. Royal Oak. Um, I look at the Ravens. Um, you know, when I look at the Ravens, I think Royal Oak, you know what I mean? Like they had a similar year where started off strong, struggled late. Similar. It's a similar story for coach Aaron Smith. And that's something he's got to fix is, you know, you have the strong start, and then once the calendar turns, they tend to struggle a little bit. So I don't know what the um, problem is with Royal Oak. I mean, like, they've got to address that issue this offseason. Is they got to address that is if how they start and how they finish. That's really what it is for Royal Oak. And I think that's going to be where the key is going to be for them going forward is how do they handle things? That's the question. That is the question. I have for Royal Oak heading in next year. Rochester, I'm excited about this team. There's a lot to like about them. They lose two seniors. Um, and they were proven players, too. Really talented players. Um, you do return Max Mall. You have Jake Tandy. Um, you do return um, Logan Lower. Um, I'll tell you what. There's a lot to like with Rochester. There really is. They have a direction. Their program strength looks strong. Um, they have an identity. And I think Rochester, once they get some seasoning in them, I think it can be a very good team. I mean, it all comes down to seasoning. I mean, like, obviously, when you have a young team, you know what I mean? You're going to have to go through trial by fire. And I think that's what Coach Nick Cabola's team's gone through. It's gone through trial by fire. Um, I think with Rochester, it's going to be interesting to see how they do, and you know, you look at Rochester, I think they're going to be a scary team next year. They're going to really be a team that I think is going to be a, a a team to really, really watch for next year. Um, So I think Rochester is going to be a scary team to watch. Stony Creek, um, when I look at the Cougars, um, it's an interesting scenario for Stony. Because you lose Trey Walker, you lose Dominic Faye Curry, you lose Evan Woodward. Um, how do you explain, you know, the last few years? They haven't, I don't know what's going on. The transition period was tougher than thought or something. Um, but it looks like, you know, they started to show some signs. They struggled early on, started to show some signs, and then they kind of struggled again. So I don't know what it is right now with coach Jeff Owens team. I just don't know what it is. Um, they do got some talent coming back. Um, Gideon beers is one of them. I'm high on Trace Tyree Smith is another one. I'm high on, um, Stony Creek. They should be better. I mean, we'll see. I mean, we'll see what they have coming back. I mean, program strength is very interesting with them. Um, so something to really watch for, with Stony Creek going forward is program strength. Um, then there's Pontiac. Um, Pontiac, really excited for this team. Really excited for this team. I think Pontiac's a team that really, um, they could surprise some people. I mean, they could really surprise some people. Um, they're going to be a team to really watch for next year is Pontiac. I mean, they got J.J. Claudio. Um... I'm really high on what Coach Andrew Myers' team is going to look like this year, next year. So there's a lot to like with them. And before I for, mention Ferndale University, I got to talk about Ferndale. Forgot to mention them in the um, red side of things. Um, when I look at Ferndale um, next year, they're going to be good. They should be better than what they they were this year. I mean, they were a very young team. Um, Trenton Root, they lose to graduation. That's going to be a big loss. Um, there's others they lose. Um, so when I look at Ferndale, 
Um, I think they're going to be better. I mean, now the question for me is going to be is how will this team respond after a really um after a tough loss in the district final to the eventual Division Two state champion um Warren Lincoln Ames. Um, Warren Lincoln, of course, had a really nice year. I was really impressed with the um with the Abes how they played in that game. I mean, against them Goodrich when they um when they they just played really good basketball. Um, you know, they shoot the three very well, very efficient offensively. Um, just very crisp. I mean, they had a really nice win against Grand Rapids Christian, um, winning that one. Um, but when I look at Ferndale next year, um, they're gonna be okay. I mean, a lot of young talent this year. I think they're gonna be better next year. And I think that experience, the loss to Warren Lincoln will motivate them, I think, to do very well heading into next year. So a lot to like with the Eagles next year for Coach Juan Rickman. Um, I think they're going to be a scary team to watch heading into next year. So apologies to um, Coach Juan Rickman and the Imperial Eagles. Um, I apologize for putting you guys on this, um, you know, on this part of the recap. So I apologize. Um, and then there's the Ferndale University Eagles. Um, rough year for Coach Josh Nix. Um, when I look at the Eagles, um, I think Ferndale U, they were very young this year. I mean, they did lose some key players to graduation, but the most of that roster was very young. And for Coach Josh Nick, it just comes down to is building the program. That's really what it is. Um, they had their ups, they had their downs. Um, but I think Ferndale U is going to be better. I think University is going to be much better um, next year. And I think having that experience is going to help them for sure heading into the year, heading into the next season. So. A lot to like with Ferndale University. Um, I think they're going to do some wonders. Um, we'll see what happens heading into next year. So when I look at next year, obviously, you know, you look at some teams to really watch for. Um, obviously, you got to wonder what North Farms is going to do after the loss to Orchard Lake St. Mary's. It's their third straight loss to them. Um, does the MHA decide to put them in a, in a district together, or do they put them in a different district? I mean, we don't know. Um, you know, obviously, is there a team that could stand up to Trey McKinney and Orchard Lake St. Mary's? I think there is. Um, West Bloomwood could be a team, even though they lost them in the district final. Um, you know, and, and I know, and I know, you know, obviously, when you look at that game against Orchard Lake St. Mary's for North Farmington, um, yeah, Trey McKinney at 32 points. My question for me is going to be is, can he score that by himself? I mean, obviously, comparing him to, um, you know, the young lady from Mayo, um, you know, who's only a freshman this year. She, and she's an impressive player. I'll tell you that much right now. Um, but, you know, it just comes down to is, can you trust McKinney to do things by himself? And that is the question that I have heading into the next season for Orchard Lake State Mirrors. Can Trey McKinney do things by himself? Um, so when I look at, in the back of the OA for next year, um, obviously, Lake Orion's a team to watch for next year. I think they're going to be scary. Can Clarkson have a bounce back year? Can Adams bounce back? Can Troy, you know what I mean? Can Troy reciprocate the success they had this year? Um, can um, can Berkeley get back to replicate their success? What will Groves be next year? Um, I think Groves could be a scary team next year. I mean, how would Oak Park be? I mean, there's a, so many storylines that you can think about when you look at the OAA in boys basketball next year. There's so many storylines, you know, that, you know, you can you can say yourself is, you know, can one of these teams get to a state championship? And I think, yes. I think, you know, you look at Ferndale. Ferndale, I think they're due for a bounce back year next year. And you look at a team that could go D1. Obviously, West Bloomfield is the team you got to talk about. Does North Farmington got a chance? Does, you know, do you look at a Lake Orion or Farmington? Or an Oxford, you know, or Clarkston, or an Adams, or Rochester, you know? I mean, do they have chances? Yeah. I think everybody next year in the OA has got a chance. I really do. I think next year the league's going to be really interesting. So we'll see what happens. 
see what happens. All right, now we're going to go from boys to girls. Um, West Bloomfield's run to the, to the state quarterfinals I really wasn't surprised with. Um, they knocked off Detroit Renaissance in the um, semifinal. Um, and then they had no issue at Royal Oak, 58-25. Um, Royal Oak had an incredible year. Just an incredible year, incredible year at first for Coach Brian Zapata. Um, you look at the Ravens where they were at. Winning their first district championship at Warren Cousineau on a winning layup from, from um, Lucy Freitag. That says a lot. So I said to myself, okay, does War does Royal Oak have a chance against Grosse Point North? And I'll admit this on there. And I'll admit this on there. And I owe a lot of apologies to Raven Nation, the Raven Flock, um, and especially Coach Brian Zapata in the Royal Oak Ravens Girls Basketball Program. I apologize for not taking you against Grosse Point North. Because I thought Grosse Point North came in, they had a lot of experience. You had Natalie Babcock on that team. You have, I mean, you have, there's others on that team are really good. And they go, go in there and win that one 53-48 in an incredible regional semifinal game. I apologize to Coach Brian Zapata for that. Because I did not expect them to do that. I did not expect them to just go in there and do that. So... My apologies to the Raven Nation, Brian Zapata. I apologize. And then you knew they had to take on West Bloomfield, and you know how that was gonna how that was gonna end. Um but for Royal Oak, great season. Great season. They didn't win the white, but they had a great year in the postseason, winning their first district championship, getting the regional for the first time ever. That's a lot to be a pro proud 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 of if you're coach Brian Zapata and the Ravens and the Royal community. That is a big, and that is a stepping point for next year. When you look at Royal Oak is I think this team can be very good. I mean, still got experience coming back. They still got a ton of proven experience coming back. So there's a lot to like, a lot to be proud of for Royal Oak. Had a really nice year. Had a really nice year. And then there is, um, Bloomfield Hills. Bloomfield Hills had an incredible year this year. Um, Sharing the white this year with um with um Seaholm. Um they won their first district championship in school history. Um it's part of that process that Coach Kristen Massey's been going through. Is you've you've now won a league title, you've won you've won a blue title, you've won you shared a white title, and now you've won a district title. So that says something right there for Coach Kristen Massey. You're building something here at Bloomfield Hills. She's building something. And you look at, and she's taken that program, I think, to far lengths that anybody would have could have imagined. I mean, obviously, you look at what she's done, you know, since taking over for Coach Jeff Rubin. She has done a wonderful job. She's turned that program around. She's got kids believing in the system. But also what helps is you have a proven, what helps is, you got a system in place over there. You got you you got a system in place which is very successful. I mean, obviously, you like to go. You have a lot of bigs. You have Ruby Smith is a very good big. Um, Brianna Ford, Brianna Young's gonna be a star. Brianna Young's a star in the making. I think she's gonna be very good. I mean, I when I watch her play, she is something. She is something. I'll tell you what. I mean, I'm really impressed with her. Really, really impressed with Brianna Young. Just how she played. How she plays. Ashley Forder had a nice year um, this year for um, Royal, I mean, for Blue Bay Hills. She had a really nice year. Um, I'll tell you what, Blue Bay Hills is going to be back. I think they're going to be back. Um, they're going to be good. I mean, their program strength is good. Um, I like where they're at. And I think they're going to be a team really to watch for in the years ahead. I think Blue Bay Hills is going to be really talented. I really. I'm looking forward to seeing how Coach Kristen Massey's team does going forward. Um, great season for Bloomfield Hills. Just another step in a long chapter building the program. And I give Coach Kristen Massey a lot of credit for doing a wonderful job this year building that Bloomfield Hills program. Um, and then there's Clarkston. Um, you know, they got to the regional semis and knocked up Lakeland um, behind their defense. 
Um, and then there's the Grand Blank game. And I knew this was gonna be a gonna be a tough game for Clarkson. Couple reasons. Grand Blank had a size advantage against Clarkson. They had a size advantage. And but Clarkson kept fighting, kept fighting, fighting, fighting. Obviously, what helps is, you know, now as hard as yet Eliana Roback and and um Eliam and Eliam Munger combined for um they had thirty three of their um they had thirty three points combined. Um Roback at eighteen, Morgan at fifteen. Um they Graham Blank did a really good job shutting down Brooklyn Colbert. Um, you know, and that was a tight game. I mean, Graham Blank ended up winning that one by two, but there was some controversy in that game. Graham Blank, how does Graham Blake get caught with six people on the courts? I mean, that's something that you don't see every day. And yet Clarkson had a chance to win that game. You know, I mean, they had they made two free throws and they had a chance to win it. Um but Graham Blank ended up winning it 44-42, um, denying Clarkson a regional title. Um, now this opens up another question. Should, you know, when you look at the districts this year, you look at Graham Blank. Graham Blank's played almost virtually everybody in the red, with the exception of Blake Orion and, and Rochester. And I mean, they, I mean, they're going to play Stony Creek in the quarterfinals, um, which that should be really interesting. We're going to preview that in a minute. In a couple minutes. Um, well, when I look at the when I look at Graham when I look at Graham Blank in the district, should Clarkston go in that district instead of Oxford? That's a good question for the MHA to decide, because you look at a geographical map here, and you look at Graham Blank, compare that to Clarkston, and compare that to Oxford. Graham Blank is, I think, in my opinion. I think Grand Blank's closer to, to um, they're closer to Clarkston than they are to Oxford, because, and I'm not being mean here. I got to look at a map here, but I just think that Grand Blank, you know, all you got to do to get to Clarkston for Grand Blank is just take Grand Blank and take Dixie Highway down. That's all I got to do. That's all I got to do is take Dixie Highway down, you know, and then, and then if you're like Oxford, you know what I mean. You know, can you just imagine this for Oxford? Probably having to... I, it wouldn't surprise me next year if when the MHA released their districts in June um, that Clarkson's with Grand Blank and Oxford's probably with Lake Orion next year. It would not surprise me because it could, when, I look at, when I look at the geographical location, it makes more sense geographically. So, but when I look at the Wolves next year, they do lose some key players. You lose Claire Walker. You lose Emily Valencia. That's gonna be that's gonna be some tough losses there. But you do return Marley Mazer. You do return Brooklyn Colbert. You do return Eli Munger. Um, you do return Eliana Roback. Yeah, Brooklyn Colbert coming back. Lexi Fry shows some flashes. Ellery Hernandez is a very good three point shooter. Um, Clark program strength looks solid for Clarkson. Um, so when I look at the Wolves. Could you just imagine, I feel like the rivalry between Clarkson and Lake Orion in girls basketball, if it hasn't picked up already, it's going to pick up the next few years because you got the coaches in place. You got, you got the programs are already built. You got proven players on both sides. I mean, there's some storylines here. I mean, if you watch, you know, the Big Ten, you watch, you watch, um, Divided we stand, you know what I mean, on the on BTN. People would say, like, with rivalries, you watch that one. You watch, you know, you look at Michigan, Michigan State. You look at, you know, in, in the way, you look at some great rivalries. You have Troy, Troy, Athens. Berkeley, Royal, Berkeley, Royal Oak. Farmington, North Farmington. Um, Troy, Troy, Athens. Um, you know, you got Oxford, Lake Orion. Um, Clarkston, West Bloomfield. West Bloomfield, Bloomfield Hills. Rochester and Adams, Adams, Stony Creek. I mean, like Stony Creek, Adams. I mean, there's a lot of great rivalries in the OAA. Um, but you know, I think when you look at when you look at next year, and Clarkson's got a lot coming back, Lake Orion's got a lot coming back. Um, I'm telling you, I think Clarkston they're going to be scary. I mean, they're going to be. It'll be very interesting to see how the MHA does this in June. But I'll tell you what, Clarkson's going to be loaded. I mean, they got a loaded team next year. They are going to be loaded. 
I mean, when you look at the players they got coming back. So there's a lot to like with the Wolves heading into next year. A lot to like. You know, they um they didn't get they didn't get the job done this year in the regionals. Um, you know they're gonna want to get back to the regionals. You have two proven players um on that team, very good team surrounding them. Um it'll be interesting to see how Coach Aaron Goodnow does with this team heading going forward. But you could tell, like, when you look at Northern Oakland County. You know, this could be set some really fun girls basketball in the next um, one to two years. One, maybe three years. So, it'll be very interesting to see how how this goes. I mean, like, it, I mean, if I'm a fan of splitting Lake Orion and Clarkson up in districts, I do it. Because I'll tell you what. I mean, like, I remember a couple years ago back in 2011, um, you know, when they split up Lake Orion and Clarkson in volleyball, they met in the state semis, and that was very entertaining right there. Um, they could do it again. Who knows? Um, just leaving that the MHA to decide that one. Um, now let's look at the state quarterfinal matchups. Um, when you look at Division One, and you look at Stony Creek, you're saying to yourself, how in the world is Stony Creek here? Because this was a team that wasn't supposed to be here, and I'm not going to be mean to that team, to them. But a lot of people in the media thought they would lose to Macomb, Dakota in the regional final. Home court, you know, home court against them. You know what they go? They go on a 24-9 run. Sarah LaPurry scores 12 early points in the first quarter. And look what she finishes up with. 32. Sarah LaPurry has been really fun to watch in her four years at Stony. Whether it's been Kellen James or... um. Or um, Columbus Williams. I mean, her game has been fun to watch. She's a multi-sport athlete. She's a, she's also a girls lacrosse player. Um, her game is just so fun to watch. She knows how to take over a game. Um, obviously, you look at Merrick Schlaubach. has been solid defensively. The Avaj sisters has been really good for Stoney. Um, Castillo Avaj has been playing well. Izzy Avaj, obviously, has got... The most experienced of the three sisters. Um, but obviously, when you look at Stony Creek, um, they're going to be playing Grand Blank um, at Callahan Hall. And this is a very interesting matchup because Stony Creek and Clarkson, and like, and I even put like Orient in this, almost nearly similar. But Stony Creek has experience. When you look at this game, Grand Blank, obviously they got the coach, you know, they got the longtime coach and, um, you know, I think it's Bob Taylor's his name. Um, but I mean like, but, um, I look at Grand Blank, obviously Grand Blank, Aaliyah McQueen's back for them. Chelsea Bishop's back. Um, they had to survive Clarkson. They had to survive. If this game turns out to a discipline game, I would trust Stony Creek right now with that discipline game because of what happened that game against Clarkson. So when I look at if it, if it's a foul fest, which I expect that game could be, um, I think if I had to trust somebody right now in that game between Grand Blank and um, Stony Creek right now, honestly, I would trust Stony Creek in that one. I would really trust the Cougars in that one because. I think, you know, but the key for Stony Creek in that game against Grand Blank is Sarah LaPurry has to stay on the floor. If she doesn't stay on the floor, they're done. That's really what it is. If she stays on the floor, good things happen. If she doesn't, they're done. That's really what it is. Um, They've gotten some timely play from Sam Fulkerson. Um, I think Taylor Fulkerson's been um, another player for them that's Played really well for them. So, it'll be interesting to see how Stony Creek matches up against Grand Blank. Um, if they win, they're going to go to the Breslin. Most likely playing Belleville in the next round. Which, they don't match up really well with at all. And I'm not being mean to them. Because they don't match up well with Belleville at all. Um, and then, in the other side, you got West Bloomfield. West Bloomfield, they've been here before. They are on a mission to get back to Breslin. They have Temperance Bedford waiting in first. 
I mean, Bedford knocked off Detroit Cast Tech, which I was a little surprised what they did that. A little surprised. Um, obviously, with how well Coach Antoine Simpkins coaches that team. And he coached them well. Um... So, in this matchup here, I don't see how Tempers, the, the um, Kicking Mules are going to guard um, the Davis sisters or Destiny Washington or Kendall Hendricks or Sheridan Beal. It's a matchup nightmare. It's a matchup nightmare. So, I'm curious to see what type of defensive game plan that Tempers Bedford is going to go with against West Bloomfield. And even, and even if they go with that plan, I don't think it's going to work. So, I'd be shocked if it did. But I know how, how well-oiled machine that team is. They're a well-oiled machine. And well-coached, too. I mean, Darren McAllister does a really good job of that team. This is by Jamie Gentz, by the way. Um, so I see West Bloomfield going to the Breslin. Um, I also see Stoney going to the Breslin as well. So I do see that happening. Um, Stony Creek, if they get there, they'll probably play Belleville, which they don't match up well with. Um, I apologize to Cougar Nation. I don't see him getting the state final. West Bloomfield would rematch Rockford in the state semifinals. That could be a, a very interesting game because last year, I mean, two years ago, West Bloomfield had to beat Rockford to get their state championship. Last year, it was Rockford having to get by West Bloomfield to get to their state championship. So here's basically the rubber match. And... This is going to be interesting to see how West Bloomfield guards Rockford's guards. Because that's what the matchup's going to be. Because they didn't do a good job last year guarding their guards at all. Um, they let one go off for 20 points on them. Which is unheard of against a Laker team. Because especially how good that, that um, their defense has been. So, it'll be very interesting to see, you know, if they do play at the Breslin Center. Um... It'll be interesting to see how that matchup goes because whoever wins that game, I think is going to win the Division One state championship. And I'm not being mean to Belleville or Stony Creek. Now, Stony Creek's got to deal with Grand Blank. They got to be careful in that game because Grand Blank can also beat Stony. So it'll be interesting to see how that one goes. So my thoughts in the quarterfinal matchups, I got Stony Creek over Grand Blank. The key in that matchup, Sarah LaPerry's got to stay on the floor. If she doesn't, Stoney's done. Um, and then on the other side, I don't see West Bloom having an issue with Temperance Bedford. Um, and then, <laughs> obviously hanging the rematch between um, West Bloomfield and Rockford in the semifinals. Um, Stony Creek, I have them playing Belleville. They don't match up well with Belleville at all. Um, I think Belleville moves on the state finals. I think West Bloomfield gets the revenge here. I think the Lakers knock off Rockford. Um, it'd be a tight game, really close game. Um, it'll be a really good game, though, in front of the orange um, orange clad fans over there at Rockford, um, who's going to usually fill up almost half of the, half of the stands at the Breslin Center. Um, and then I think West Bloomfield takes on Belleville in the state finals, and I think Darren McAllister wins the state championship um, for West Bloomfield. is um second state championship. And I think the Davis sisters go out on top winners. And I'll be honest with you. I had to put the Davis sisters in my top um, in my top 10 when it comes to, um, you know, best players I've ever seen. They're that good. They're that special. And they work so hard. You know? I'm really impressed with the Davis sisters. The way they play. Um, you know, obviously, um, Summer Davis was named the Gatorade Player of the Year. Um, in the state of Michigan, our sister India was the, um, was that last year. So congratulations to summer on that. Both of them are going to have a really great career at Georgia. Um, and I think they're going to do great things over at Georgia. So we'll see what happens. Wish the best of luck to Stony Creek and also to West Bloomfield in the um, state quarterfinals and also beyond if both teams get to the Breslin Center. Um, We'll keep an eye on that on blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. Um, we're going to preview. We got both games already previewed between Stony Creek uh, and Grand Blank and also West Bluebeard and Temperance Bedford. Um, so we'll see what happens going on um, around the OA. Obviously, I did release the um, district project, early district projections, regional projections for 
All spring sports are also on the blog at saginawbay.com. Um, I'm going to sign off here. Make sure um, you follow the blog um, at saginawbay.com. Also on the ONTV blog as well. We'll see what happens. Take care. God bless. And I'll see you all next week. Take care. God bless.